In today's video, I'm gonna put the swing out tire carrier back on the back of my CJ7. Today I got an old brownie in the shop and I was gonna put the uh, tire carrier back on the back of it and the piece that holds the tire carrier on was sitting there, it was bent down like that. So I went to hit it with a hammer to straighten it out and well, I broke it all the way off. Now this tire carrier was like a home, homemade, home built deal probably 20 years ago. And it's got basically a piece of pipe with a bushing in it. And the inside of that bushing is one inch. So what they did was they took a piece of one inch round stock and they welded in, I'm guessing they drilled this hole, welded on both sides of this piece of uh, two by four square tubing, capped it off and then welded it to the bumper. But then they tapped that round stock and put a nut in, or a boat and a washer on top of it. But I'm gonna have to cut all this off to redo it. And I'm gonna do something similar to that. I've got a piece of angle iron here. I'm gonna probably put on there somehow or another. Haven't quite figured that out yet figure it out as I go but I went and bought a one inch bolt and I'm gonna put that one inch bolt in there and we'll slide that thing over and then we'll put a nut and washer on this and that should hold it honestly should hold it better than this 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 solid stock is probably like a mild steel and that's a grade 8 bolt so it should hold it better the first thing I need to do is cut this thing off I don't know how I'm gonna do that yet. I may hit my plasma cutter, my grinder. I mean, it's got, it's got a lot of weld on it. So I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do that just yet. I may cut the front off. I don't know. We'll figure that out here in a minute. I'm gonna start cutting on with the plasma cutter and we'll just see what happens from there. All right, I got all that mess ground off there, cut off there. That was kind of a pain. This boat's gonna go right in here somewhere. So I'm gonna drill a hole through this top of this angle iron. And I'll cut this to length where it's not hanging over. I'll just butt it up to it like it was. And I'll probably cut some angles on here. I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do it yet, but for now, I know I need to drill a hole in it, so we'll get a hole drilled in it. I'm gonna attempt to drill this hole with a one inch hole saw. If that doesn't work, I've actually got a one inch drill bit, but I'll have to put it on the drill press for that because there ain't no hole in it. So hopefully this works. Not looking good so far. This bit's dull as hell. I went ahead and pre-drilled my quarter inch hole. So we'll see how this goes now. All right, hopefully this works. I measured when I drilled my hole, I tried to give it enough space where I didn't have to cut the head off the boat. So it'll be Eh, it'll be pretty level. If I weld the bolt head to this angle iron and also to the bumper, I don't think it's ever going to go anywhere. I mean, this, this hole's in here pretty tight. I don't think it's going anywhere. I mean, really, if I weld the head of it, it should hold all the bolts on hold. So I think that'll work. Now I just got to figure out how I'm going to mount it on the bumper. I think what I'm going to do is just hold this against the bumper or the boat heads down here. Let's see how square we can get it. I'm thinking one and seven eighths. If I cut this off one and seven eighths, we should be good. Okay, I got her cut off and I fit her up on there and it, it looks pretty good. 
Now I'm gonna take and cut. Instead of having it all boxed over like it was, I'm gonna cut this at a 45 on each side of it. So I'm gonna cut there and cut that off. And there's gonna be a thin section where the boat is. Then I will a piece of metal on each side of it. I think it'll look better than just a, a box welded on the back of there. I mean, that's basically what it was before, just a box welded on there. So I'm gonna make it look a little bit better since I've had to go this far taking it apart. So that's my plan. Cut there, cut that out. I'll get that cut out and then uh, we'll hold it up right again and see what it looks like. On that tire carrier, it used to have like this spring-loaded mechanism that held it right here, which broke off. So what my cousin did was he welded a piece of flat strap with a nut on it and put a bolt through the back of it to hold it on. And I think that's the way I'm gonna hold it on here for now. But that bolt has broke off in there. So I'm gonna try to drill that thing out See if I can get it to come out with an easy out. If not, I'll just take a grinder and just just cut it all off and redo it all. But if there's a chance I can just drill it out, I'm gonna try that first because that's gonna be easier than cutting and grinding all that stuff. Yeah, I ended up giving up on the drill and I had to grind that nut off the back. That thing's bent in. I mean, I don't know if you can see this tailgate's bent in from that tire rack pushing into it. Figuring we'll hit a tree or something, maybe never know but I'm gonna try to straighten this out this wrench maybe <clears throat> it's getting better straighter anyways the problem is it bent in and then this tab this brace got welded to it after it's already bent in so I don't think I'll ever get it level with the bumper I'm just trying to get a little bit better than it was That's about all I got. Hey, that doesn't look horrible, so we'll go with that. I got my bracket all ground up. Looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna take and stick my boat through there, and I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it on the uh, the tire carrier itself and bolt it up, so I'll know, you know, how high this part of it needs to be. Then when I get that, I'll go ahead and tack weld the bolt to the bracket. Then I'll take that back. I'll take it off the carrier and I weld this, this bolt on here pretty decent. As you can see, I didn't get too crazy with welding it. I just welded around the head of the boat and then I put like a stitch weld on each side of the boat on the top. I didn't want to put too much heat on this up here with the fear of making it weaker than it, than it needs to be. And when I weld it on the bumper, I'll go ahead and weld the other side of the boat here on there. I don't think it's going anywhere. So I'm gonna get this put on the, the uh, tire carrier. I'm gonna get the tire carrier up here. I'm gonna bolt a bolt on that side that holds it on the bumper on that end. And we'll kind of eyeball where this needs to go. But I'll get this tacked onto the bumper and then we'll take the carrier off, weld this to the bumper. All right, I got it setting up here. I got it leveled out with a jack. I use my little angle finder put it on the bumper, then put it on this and got it. It's within a couple of degrees from the bumper, so I like it. Jack's holding it up, got a C-clamp holding it there to the bumper. So I'm gonna tack, I'm gonna put some pretty decent tacks on each side of this. Then I can take this thing back off, weld that up and start plating it in. And then we'll be done with this thing. I got that welded across the top, got it attached there at the bottom of the boat head. So now I'm just gonna cut a couple pieces of plate to plate this off. And it looks like two and a half inches will be what I need. I've got some plate over there. I'll just mark it two and a half inches and cut it with my plasma cutter real quick. And grind the edges and we'll, we'll get that welded on there. I got these pieces cut. I'm gonna put them on about like that. I'm gonna tack them up. I'm gonna load them on there and. I'll show you the finished product. All right, I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, I'm not the best welder in the world, plus my uh, hood kept fogging up on me. It's, it's pretty cold in here today. But I'm gonna let that cool off and uh, shoot it with a little paint. Then we'll put the tire rack back on. Looks like our paint's dried up now. All we gotta do now is put it back together. 
slap that washer on there. This thing is not light. Then on this side, I just got a bolt that goes through the uh, through the front of it there. Tighten that up and it shouldn't go anywhere. It should be pretty stable. So I've got this bolt tightened up now. Man, that thing's stable. It's not, it's not going anywhere. I mean, before this thing would, well, I mean, it fell off at the end of the day. It's pretty stable. Man, this thing used to have this spring-loaded bolt right here that you'd pull up and release it. But my cousin has such a hard time with this thing coming unlashed all the time. He ended up putting a bolt through here. And then this thing has since broke completely. So the bolt through there is about the only way to hold it together now. I suppose you could, uh, you can come up with a different latch or something to put on it. But to me, the bolt's fine. As long as you don't need to get in and out of the back of it very much, the bolt should be good enough. So I like it. It's, it feels pretty sturdy now, so I'm not afraid of it going anywhere. Feels a lot sturdier than it was. Now the only thing I think that's left to do is either get a nylock nut for this or to drill a hole through this and put a cotter pin through it to hold it, keep this nut from backing off. I mean, this nut don't even really have to be tight. It's just got to be on there enough to, enough to keep the play off of like, like this washer. I mean, I can move it a little bit right now. It don't need to be super tight just tight enough to keep the slack off of this from bouncing around too much. And I think these washers help because that, that bushing, it's like, I don't know if it's bronze or brass or whatever the heck it's made out of. It's a little wallered out in there, so it's got a little bit of play, but with these washers on the top and bottom, it takes a lot of that play out. So it makes it, it, makes it pretty, pretty snug fit now. All right, just in case you're wondering some measurements, I'll give you a couple measurements on this thing. The bumper, you know, is, is Jeep width, which is, I want to say it's, it's like 59 inches, 59 inches wide. I think it's just the width of the Jeep. Uh, this bottom bar on the tire rack is about 40 inches. These bars going up are like 26 and a half and they are set on a 75 degree angle. Then that bar across the top is 29, and then this crossbar is 20. And that's pretty much all the measurements. I mean, if you're wanting to build a tie rack that looks like this, that's how much tubing you need to do it. The part that the tire mounts to is actually just part of a two-piece rear axle. It's just the hub off a two-piece rear axle. Uh, it's just AMC 20 outer hub. I mean, if you get one of these Jeeps and you switch to uh, one-piece axles in the rear, you'll have one of these laying around. And it's basically just a bolt uh, welded inside here, ran out there with, with a nut on it. It's pretty sturdy. It's, it's, it's been there for years and had, hasn't ever went anywhere. And if you have these little caps that, on your axles, you can hide that bolt and it, it gives it kind of a clean look. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it wasn't super exciting. Didn't have a lot of technical anything in it, but it's just a project that I needed to get done and I had a day to do it. So I just wanted to get it done and I figured, hey, I'll go ahead and film it. Maybe somebody will get something out of the video at least. If you did get something out of the video or you liked the video or you just enjoy my personality, give me a thumbs up subscribe. There's more of this personality to go around. Anyways, thanks for watching.